Hi everybody, thank you for joining us today and we're going to be talking about heavy metal and it's not the kind that you headbang or play air guitar to. We're actually talking about heavy metal that you find in food and joining us today is Tyler Collins. He's the epidemiologist for the city of Midland. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us. And heavy metal in food is really not something that people think about on a regular basis. No, it's not, but it's something to be aware of and uh, cognizant of what's in your food. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump in, jump in feet first. Uh, recently, we've seen certain types of food that do contain high levels of heavy metal. We're talking things like baby food. But what exactly, what types of metals are we talking about? So we're talking primarily about metals like lead, arsenic, mercury, cadmium, and uh, thallium, if we want to pull up the slide on that. Um, we can see what kind of uh, items have these metals in them. So batteries and paint for lead, thermometers um, and light bulbs for mercury, arsenic, certain herbicides, pesticides, insecticides, and then cadmium is cigarette smoke is the kind of the main one there. Okay, now we obviously, a lot of people may not have heard of several of these metals, but they're definitely in our households pretty much all the time. Yeah, we uh, see them in, you know, some everyday items, um, and then we also see them in food as, you know, food is grown in the soil, and these heavy metals are naturally occurring, but can also be occurring because of pollutants. And so when the plants grown in the soil uh, absorb nutrients from the soil, they can also absorb these heavy metals. And so when we ingest these foods or ingest animals that have uh, eaten these foods, we can absorb these metals as well. Okay, so since we're talking about these metals in food, let's go ahead and, and tackle that. Um, what foods are more likely to have these metals in them? We've already mentioned baby food, and how did they get there to begin with? So fish is a, is a big one that can um, absorb heavy metals. Um, we can also see vegetables that, again, you know, grown in soil. Rice is a very absorbent uh, food, as anyone who's dropped their phone in the water and needed to, to try and rescue it well, knows. Um, and so the other thing we see is sometimes supplements purchased from overseas that maybe don't have as uh, good uh, regulations on, on what goes into them. Okay, so uh, the FDA actually did release some guidelines uh, this year. It's called the Closer to Zero Initiative. Um, what does that mean for people like you and me and everybody else out there? Yeah. So as the name implies, the goal of these FDA guidelines is to get these levels of heavy metals uh, closer to zero, as close to zero as possible. Obviously, they're naturally occurring. It's impossible to get them entirely out, but the goal is to get them to um, as safe a level as possible. Um, and so we've already seen, you know, in recent years, like from 2012 to 2018, a 30 percent drop in the levels of heavy metals in uh, rice cereals, for instance. Okay, so that's a good thing. So we're, we're headed in the right direction there. Yes, yes. Okay, now we obviously, we don't want to scare anybody or anybody that, that's watching right now. And oh my God, you know, love metals in my food. We can actually consume a certain amount of metal that is still okay for us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are certain metals that we need, you know, copper, zinc, iron, those sort of things that you might see in a, a supplement at the store are good for us and we need a, a certain level of those. But even with those and then with heavy metals, um, though heavy metals are not beneficial to us. And if you get a certain amount of those in your body, it becomes difficult to clear them fast enough wherein you start to take on the symptoms of uh, heavy metal poisoning. Now these are questions if uh, they happen to arise <clears throat> with regards to say your supplements, uh, you can just uh, bring that up with your with your doctor or even your pharmacist, right? Yes, yes, that's right. And you know, be sure to look at the ingredients on the things that you're taking, whether it's food or, or something from the store and be aware of what might be in it. And just be aware too of not, you know, eating fish every single day. You're more likely to absorb higher levels of heavy metals doing that. You wanna vary your diet. So basically, we're talking here like we do with any any kind of diet, the regimen that you're on, everything in moderation. That's, yeah, that's exactly right. And the same thing is true for children. You know, we talked about baby foods right. earlier, and we talked about rice cereals. Those are, you know, rice cakes or things like that are very common um, for kids to consume. Um, but you'll want to vary your, your child's food. So things like maybe uh, oats or uh, instead of rice, um, and just varying the foods that your child eats will help 
prevent the buildup of those heavy metals. Okay. Now we've already talked a little bit about the uh, the effects of the the metal poisoning. Are there anything any things any side effects? that are long-term mm -hmm. that we need to be aware of. Yeah, so especially for kids because they are smaller and have a slower metabolism, um, the things that they are primarily concerned about are gonna be neurological development problems. Um, they can also be more likely to have you know, liver or kidney failures due to these, but those are problems that everyone should be aware of. They're short-term short -term symptoms as well, um, like we have stomach pain, chills, diarrhea, vomiting, which is not, you know, uncommon from a number of illnesses, but um, we just want to be aware of what those short-term symptoms look like and then kind of think about what your child's eating um, and be aware of those long-term issues that, that can affect them. And again, things like these, the long-term, especially things you want to uh, take up with your uh, doctor or pediatrician yes. if you're concerned about it. That's right. Okay, now we've talked a little bit about <clears throat> how to decrease the amount of metal um, let's, let's get a little bit deeper into that. What, what other things can you do with the exception or uh, aside from, from moderation and uh, limiting certain types of food? Yeah, it's, you know, being careful about ordering things from um, overseas that you're not exactly sure of what, what, what the regulations are. You know, if, for instance, you grow food in your backyard, you might want to try and look into the history of the property, see if there was any um, industrial activity or possible pollutants that could um, infect the soil and cause higher levels of heavy metals there. So things like that. And then, you know, be aware of uh, FDA recalls. They might issue recalls on certain food items that are detected to have higher levels of heavy metals. You know, I'm actually, I'm glad you brought that point up just now because a lot of people do have gardens in their backyard or if they live out in the country, you know, they have little country gardens. You don't always stop to think the person uh, who lived there ahead of you could have done some sort of an herbicide or, or something in the ground before you got there. So it, it's, a, it's a good idea to check on that. Yeah, yeah. And so like, for instance, these heavy metals can linger quite a while. So uh, arsenic used to be used as a pesticide in apple orchards. And although that hasn't been the case for years, you never know if the person who lived in the house before you or the, the land that you're on used to have some sort of herbicide or pesticide that's no longer um, allowed or no longer used, it was used in the past and might damage the soil in that way or lead to higher levels of heavy metals. So just be aware of things like that um, and be aware of the food that you're consuming and maybe what went on in the past. Now, you and I, I'm sure, and everybody out there knows someone who is expecting a new baby, just had a new baby, or uh, has toddlers around the house. Mm -hmm. uh, what do ex current parents and new parents um, have to look, look forward to or what, what can they uh, be aware of? Yeah, so, you know, like we said, moderation in varying your child's diet. It's very, you know, difficult. Sometimes kids only like a certain thing and want to just keep eating that thing over and over again. But if, for instance, they really love uh, rice cakes or something and those rice cakes have a higher level of heavy metals, they're just building up that same heavy metal over and over again. Whereas if they varied their food, it would distribute it a little bit more and be easier for their for their body to clear. And so we just want to vary the foods, be aware of what your child is, is taking in, and just try and, you know, keep things in moderation. Um, but the, the main thing to be concerned about is that, or just be aware of, is that more kids suffer from poor nutrition than heavy metal poisoning. And so like that, you want to make sure your kid has a balanced diet in order to avoid both, you know, a nutrition deficit and heavy metal poisoning. So you, you don't want to deny your child a, a, a food item, mm -hmm. but just monitor it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so speaking of uh, baby food, a lot of parents like to make their own. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll you know put them in the food processor at home and you know, make their own baby food, their own pudding. Is there anything different that those particular parents need to be aware of as opposed to uh, store-bought baby food? Yeah, so um, just be aware that, you know, if you're buying vegetables or fruit from the grocery to puree, you know, those are still grown in soil that is going to have naturally occurring heavy metals. So it's not a surefire solution just because you're making it at home. The, the, heavy, the heavy metals are in there from the, the plant itself and not the, you know, food making process that a canned or jarred food item might have. And so just be aware that there's still going to be some levels in there, but most of the time it's, uh, they're safe in moderation and that you just need to be aware of um, that these 
things are going to be in your food and just to keep an eye on what those symptoms are. Now, some parents may say along that line, they say, well, I wash my, my fruits and vegetables before I process them. That works, but it's not always enough. Yeah, and I mean, that's a good habit to have. I mean, it's food, you know, basic food safety to wash those things, you know, fertilizers or other pollutants might be on the outside, but these heavy metals are absorbed into the, you know, the food and the fruit uh, itself, the fruits and vegetables themselves. And so uh, washing them is not going to remove them. Um, but most of the time they're in low enough levels that it's not anything to worry about. Okay, so wrapping things up really quickly, we've talked about, you know, how the metals get in there, what the metals are, how you can, you know, reduce the amount. And we definitely don't want anyone to go out on, on a panic and boycott certain food items mm -hmm. or anything like that. What can you tell them, in your expert opinion, that will ease their mind about the, these metals in, in the food? Yeah, so this is not something to be overly concerned about. It's not a new problem. These are, you know, heavy metals have been in our foods for, you know, decades, centuries. This is not a new issue, but it's one that we're both more aware of and better able to detect now. And because of that, these levels are actually decreasing over time. And so our food is safer now than it has been in the past. It's just that we're more aware of these heavy metals and what the detrimental effects of them are. So it's good to have that awareness. It's good to know what is in your food, but it's not something to think of as a new problem or something to be overly concerned about. Okay, so is there anything that you want to add, something that maybe we didn't already cover, uh, some extra little bits of advice for mom, dad, grandma, grandpa out there um, as they're getting ready to prepare daily meals for, for everyone. Yeah, you can find some helpful information at uh, dietaryguidelinesforamericans.gov and the CDC's um, Childhood Nutrition webpage. We have links to those on our website as well. And so those can be helpful as far as guiding, you know, new parents or, or even, you know, veteran parents to uh, be aware of what's in their food and help kind of shape their child's um, healthy diet. Yeah, and all of the uh, issues that we've addressed today, uh, those can be found on those websites. That's right. All right, so Tyler, thank you again for being with us today. And again, if you have any questions on this topic, go to the websites that we just mentioned, and they can also go to their family physician pediatrician, get some uh, answers there. But uh, I guess the main important thing here is don't panic. There is a way to you know, alleviate or eliminate some of these metals, mm -hmm. but all in all, it, it's still, they're still good for us. Yeah, and it's just to be aware of what's in your food and be aware of what these long-term symptoms are and, you know, have that conversation with your doctor and, you know, use these resources to shape a healthy diet for you and your family. All right, thanks again, Tyler. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.